So now we move directly forward to Simo and Cesar presenting a very interesting uh, biotech or case from uh, a biotech startup in Finland. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Jorg. Good morning, everyone. Hello from those of you who are seeing us streaming as there's no alternative. We used to see each other's faces. Now this is not the case, we miss you anyway. And now I'm very pleased to be here today because today I'm bringing you one of those companies that when you know about their story, you simply fall in love with them. It was my case. When I heard about it, I just started thinking, wow, this, I have to bring this example to everyone as they are simply doing things right. And we got with me today, a, the CEO and one of the five co-founders of this company named Enifer Bio and is Simo Elila, who is in charge of this. And if I'm really so proud of how they are doing things, it is no wonder due to the skillful person who's in charge of this, as Simo is very is um, familiar with five languages. He's been in four countries and he had to deal with sales, product management, contractual issues, and what's more important today with intellectual property. So with all this background, which is primarily focused on biorefining and biotech and really worried about sustainability, Simo founded with four of his colleagues, a startup based in Finland almost two years ago. But I guess that he's the best person to introduce what this company is doing, what's the story of this very interesting SME and many other things. Simo, very welcome. Thanks a lot, Cesar. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so um, as, as as I mentioned in his introduction, I'm the CEO of uh, Enifer Bio. We are a startup based in Espoo, Finland, just outside the capital. Um, so I would just like to correct that actually the company was founded only about eight months ago officially, but uh, the, the company has a lot longer history. Uh, in, in the short term, we, we were operating under uh, BTT, the Technical Research Center of Finland, which is one of the main research and technology organizations in Europe um, in a incubator program called Launchpad. Uh, but then the technology itself has an even a lot longer history. So we are actually dealing with a, a technology that was developed uh, here in Finland uh, already starting in the 1960s. Uh, so the pulp and paper industry is hugely important up here uh, in the Nordics. We have a lot of, a lot of timber, not much else. Um, and uh, back in the 60s and 70s, they used to produce a lot of something known as uh, spent sulfide liquor, uh, kind of side stream when you're making paper and cellulose that, that was kind of wasted. It was actually an environmental problem back in the day. And they developed a unique bioprocess to treat that side stream where you, you have this um, very uh, specific microfungus called, uh, that was eventually called Bekil, uh, uh, with which was, it was the name of the organism, but also about of the process and the product that was later produced using this process. So as, as is shown in this slide, so essentially what, what the process does is it takes a very dilute uh, industrial side stream, like the original spent sulfide liquor, you fit it into bioreactor. In the bioreactor, uh, the peculo microfungus is growing. It consumes a lot of the organics, thus purifying the water. And at the other end of the continuous process, you can harvest the fungus uh, very efficiently using filtration and then dry it. And presto, you have animal feed. So you're hitting two birds with one stone, essentially. You're, you're, you're purifying a side stream from a biorefining process and you're adding value by creating a new valuable product. So this is pretty unique for a startup that we actually have a process that has an industrial history. We're not bringing something you know, that we uh, concocted up in the lab yesterday, but this is actually something that was running at industrial scale for more than 15 years. Unfortunately, it was shut down in 1991 uh, because simply because the si original side stream ra uh, ran dry. There was no more spent sulfide liquor being produced in Finland, and the thus the process was shelved. That's due to the changes in the, in the pulping industry processes. So the idea behind our company is that we, we saw that there is a ready industrially validated process here. Um, and because, of, as Cesar mentioned, I've, I've, I've um, lived abroad, I've lived in Latin America, in fact, in, in Brazil for more than three years, I'm quite uh, familiar with the global biorefining industry. So I knew that there are suitable biorefining bio side streams available today, and this process could be re-implemented. The other factor, key factor, is that we're targeting a new market, 
which is aquaculture. So we're planning to make fish feed. Uh, the original product was sold as uh, feed for chicken and, and, and pigs, whereas this is now targeted at the high value aquafeed market, which does miracles for the pro uh, profitability of the process because fish feed is, is far more valuable. So that's in a nutshell what we do. We, we develop this process and we plan to implement it to convert side streams from biorefining into aquaculture feed. This is really good. You mentioned Latin America for a good reason. And I think that for strategic reasons, as I mentioned that you are doing things really right and you are kind of a prior stage, you're trying to go international. Uh, we cannot name the, the countries you are addressing for obvious reasons, but I guess that Latin America is anyway, one of your interesting areas. Uh, why so? Um, well, there's several obvious reasons. One is that we, of course, we, we need raw material to produce our fungus and, and Latin America is simply, you can say that it's the, it's the breadbasket of the world. It's what, you know, Brazil, uh, Argentina, these are huge agricultural powerhouses. Uh, and many of the, many of the raw material streams that they produce today are inefficiently used. So you could, you could extract a lot more value from that uh, and, and improve the sustainability of the processes that are implemented there. But of course, also we, we want to produce locally. So if, if we were to implement our process in Latin America, we would like to serve a local market. And aqua, aquaculture is um, is also a big business in South America, in Latin America. Oh, I see. And I couldn't help noticing that in the previous slide, it was shown, Pakilo has a small R. So it is a registered trademark, isn't it? That's right, yeah. So um, of course, as, as I mentioned, we only registered the company eight months ago um, and we really got started after our seed round in October. Uh, and one of the first things is you do as a company is register your trademark. So we, we got started in Finland and from there we're expanding um, the, the registration of the trademark to relevant markets uh, in the EU. Uh, and then we were, we were looking at markets that might be of interest to us. And then we, we just we noticed that it's not that straightforward in certain markets. Um, in Latin America, there are several countries that are not part of the so-called Madrid Agreement which allows you to, let's say, directly uh, through, through one system to expand your, your trademark registration. So um, that's kind of where we, we started to struggle. Of course, we're a small company, limited resources. Uh, we can't take care of everything ourselves. So we were really wondering, like, how do we, how do we approach these markets? And that's where we, we found you, of course. Yeah, it was. And we were so happy you to contact us. And yes, I agree with you that it is no secret that international trademark registration in Latin America is kind of a pending task. I hope that the policymakers are listening to us. It can help you in doing this a little bit easier so you can do that yourself, although it's not maybe the best case to you. But anyway, it is pretty noticeable that intellectual property is key for you and your company. But why is it so? Why is it so important? Uh, you know, trademark is absolutely key. It's kind of protecting your name, but why else? Yeah, so trademarks, obviously, we, we want to build a brand around our, our product that is recognizable. Uh, people would associate it with, with sustainability and aquaculture. But then on, on the IP side, of course, uh, when we're talking about biotech, it's, it's all about IP. It's all about patents. Uh, it's about protecting your, uh, your inventions, uh, making sure that they cannot be copied. At the same time, ensuring that you have the freedom to operate uh, in, in what you're doing. Um, it's, of course, we are at heart, we are a technology company. And, and what we do is, is, is develop the technology. And in the future, we might in several cases see uh, that our business model is actually licensing. And, and to license something, we need to have IP. Uh, of course, it's also important for, as a startup, uh, for, for building up your valuation uh, and, and ensuring that you, you're able to raise uh, more funds as, as, as your company uh, always needs when you expand. And you mentioned, you, you said it the right thing. If you don't have your rights registered, you cannot license anything. You have nothing, nothing to license. No one would buy, give you a pen. If you don't have something exclusive, that is what intellectual property provides you with. And I'm really glad that you contact us and that a company like yours that is really handling so many things at a time and you are particularly in charge of these relationships and with dealing with stakeholders and managing the core business of it. And you found us, so I'm, I'm really glad you do that. And why is it so important for a company like yours to have this kind of services at their disposal? Um, 
Yeah, um, as, I, as I briefly mentioned, of course, when you're starting a new company, you have uh, limitations both in, in terms of, of uh, available funding and and of staff. So, uh, so you, you just simply cannot do everything yourself. There's there's a lot to do and, and, and not enough resources to cover all of it. So, all of these kind of services, are, of course, uh, they a way to expand what what you can do, and, and I think it's really really great. And I was really happy. I I suddenly remembered seeing one of your presentations at a at an EU event, and, and I'm really glad that I contacted you. And I'm actually really glad for your invitation here because I was not aware that this service also exists for Southeast Asia, which is also of interest to us. So I, I know where to call next. <laughs> oh, this event really worked. We made the connection. We let the people know your case study, and many of the audience would have learned the basis of a good driven. A business like yours so thank you very much for being here uh, i'm going to call becky you up during the panel discussions but anyway should any person willing to have more information about this company or getting any partnering or a license they can contact you directly and if for bio you got the, the details on the first slide it's going to be shared anyway thank you very for being here keep you posted thanks a lot Thank you, Cesar, for bringing up this, this very, very interesting case study. And a big thank you to Simo, a very fresh entrepreneur who took some time for us. And I think we, we learned a lot from your valuable contribution. So I would also just like to stress the fact that um, this uh, new company has also been somehow created um, during an incubation service of VTT. So the VTT Launchpad. I think that's very interesting for us, also for the help desk that we uh, collaborate more and more with such regional, local or national incubation services. And we provide complementary expertise when it comes really to support the new companies, the new startups, which are incubated um, in this uh, local um, environment with specific IP knowledge. So I think that's very important to know that it works, that we have this kind of the innovation ecosystem running all over Europe. And we see that more and more incubation services like the one from, from Finland are building up in all the European countries.